we start this. Welcome <laughs> to another episode of Brick Mania. Ooh, that's how we start this. <laughs> like Dan said, welcome to another episode of Brick Mania TV. Okay, today on Brick Mania TV, Dan, you have your latest model, the MAS, M-A-S 15? MAS 15, Mas correct. 15, cool. Yes. Uh, we'll just assume it's MAS 15. Yeah. That's what it says. Awesome. So this yeah. is a uh, Italian World Italian, War One. World War One Italian mortar torpedo boat. We're going to get Professor Fitz in here to talk about it before uh, I take show you all the details. Okay, cool. All right. Here's Fitz. <laughs> All right, welcome, Fitz. Uh, I understand you are here to talk about some history. Uh, yeah. Cool. So... This boat has a lot of very interesting history to it. Oh. Um, so as has been stated, um, wait. It might have been stated. It might have been stated. Um, <laughs> the, it's a World War I torpedo boat. It's made by the Italians, a, the MOS 15. Uh, the word, the word, the abbreviation MOS is three Italian words, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, but it literally means armed torpedo boat. That's what it yeah. means. It's very simple. Um, for World War I standards, it was actually fairly fast. It could do around 24 to 26 miles an hour on the sea, which was pretty quick. Uh, it had basically armed with two torpedoes and some machine guns. Once in a while, it'd be armed with a deck gun, but typically just the two machine guns. Um, the cool part about this boat is that in, um, towards the end of the war, the uh, Austro-Hungarians were out at sea with their battleships. And they were going to attempt to cause some problems out in the Mediterranean. And uh, the commander of this boat, by name, a man by the name of Luigi Rizzo, um, was lucky enough to spot these two battleships um, off, I can't remember the coast, or excuse me, the coast of the island of Bermuda, not Bermuda. 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 Ah. Which later he actually became the count of Bermuda because Naturally. of this event. Naturally. So he spots these two battleships, which, yes. which were huge. They're referred to as a dreadnought class battleship. Um, the SMS St. Stephen, which in Hungarian sounds a little different than that, but sure. that's basically what it translates to. Right. So he spotted it and he swoops in and he gets two torpedo hits on this thing and swoops out before anybody knows what's going on. And um, the ship later capsizes and sinks. And actually, the, there's a video um, of the ship sinking. It's one of only like two videos ever taken of a battleship sinking. Wow. Um, the, he was actually already really well known because he had sank another smaller battleship just a few months prior to sinking the St. Stephen. In the, using the similar technique or the same technique? Yeah, very similar technique. These, these, these torpedo boats were extremely effective. They were fast and you could get in and out of a, of a, a convoy perimeter before sure. they even realized what was going on. I don't know if driving really fast at your enemy is exactly a technique. But no, well, it wasn't in World <laughs> War I, apparently. At the time, so, that had not been invented. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so it actually earned him the nickname The Sinker. That's, he's actually really well known still today that he's celebrated in yeah. um, Italian culture, from what I understand. Um, another interesting fact about Luigi is that he was in a command of uh, part of the Italian fleet uh, during World War II, and to prevent the Italian fleet from falling into Nazi hands, he uh, ordered the boats to be scuttled, to be sank on purpose to prevent that. So, okay. again, to his nickname, the Sinker. The Sinker, yes, he lives up to it. Um, but yeah, it's a. It, it was a fairly simple craft. It's just kind of like a motor boat with a couple of torpedoes on it, and it had what it needed. It had exactly what it needed. Yeah. That's it. Cool. Um, any other p interesting historical facts or some details about the, uh, the boat? The boat itself, um, you know, as the number might indicate, they did make many of them. They made, sure. uh, they made several of them because they were effective. They usually use them for, you know, patrolling, yep. um, but they were good at sneaking up and sinking ships and running away before they could be hit. Awesome. Um, because of their speed, they were very difficult to hit. Um, several, you know, uh, Naval technology at that time wasn't quite as advanced as it is now. So, cool. 
yeah, I guess that's that's really nice. about it. <laughs> All right, thank you, Fitz, for yeah. uh, for stopping in today and absolutely talking about some history. Now it is back to Dan, and now Dan's and back. And thank you, Professor Fitz. Thanks, Professor Fitz. Now it's time for Professor Not Dan. <laughs> Unprofessor. Hey, Dan. All okay, right. welcome back. I hope that was an informative section. It was. It was cool. It was good to get that, that, that history of this boat. And, and here I'm going to tell you about the, the features of my model. Yes, model's. your expertise is the model, is Lego building. So That is correct. What do you I hope that's you know some No, you know some history, too. But, um, right, right. Feel free to chime in some history. But I, uh, well, well, we'll just talk about this sure. boat. So. <laughs> of course, this is, this is a motor torpedo boat. Yes. You, you, you may remember we did the the PT-109 last summer. Mm -hmm. So the PT-109 was about the a bit much bigger than right. this. So that's, I think that's an 81 foot boat. This is about 50 feet. Okay. So this, this is considerably smaller, World War I versus World War II. These were wooden torpedo boats. They were made in like, you know, you see like the classic gondolas in Venice. Well, they also make motor boats. And they had the bright idea to arm them with torpedoes to destroy the Austro-Hungarian or any of the enemies of Italy. Right. So that's what he built here. Uh, of course, this is built out of Lego. It's not wood, but right. Um, so this is quite a bit smaller than the previous one I've done, but it still has sort of the same sort of features. It's it's a fast, powerful boat, gasoline engines. Um, this one's armed with two torpedoes. They're on these sort of external harnesses, and I've seen pictures of this thing in in various states. So like I, maybe when they're like in high seas, rough seas, they have the torpedoes up high, but sometimes it must be right before they're going to launch. They actually will lower them over the side. There we go. And it's kind of instead of like the the torpedo boat we did, the PT-109, which actually shoots it out of a tube, this actually just drops them in the water. So you basically just release the, the arm, push, splash, torpedo takes off, sinks your battleship, and you go speeding on your way. So you Ideally, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which, as we heard, it, it had some notable successes. <laughs> right, right, it's not easy. It's, you, you basically, you are a fast-moving target. The enemy is shooting at you. You have to get in, get out as fast as you can. Hopefully, you can get away without, without being uh, being yeah, sunk, right, captured, exactly. because that's the whole idea of a destroyer, was to, to, to destroy torpedo boats to keep them away from the capital right. ships. So they're just as fast as these guys. Um, so one interesting thing about this, this boat is armed, actually has some depth charges on the back, which oh. are for attacking torpedo or submarines. Yeah. Um, but in the case of when this attacked the Svet Isvan, um, this torpedo boat went in, Mass 15 went in, they launched their torpedoes, and they were followed by uh, or, uh, Hungarian destroyers, Austro-Hungarian destroyers, and in order to evade the, chase, the chasers, they started throwing depth charges off the back. Wow. So, of course, depth charges aren't designed to attack surface ships, but nobody wants to be over a depth charge when it explodes underwater, because right. it severely damage your ship. <laughs> so, we do have four depth charges on the back. I have a little crane that, that we built into this model. Um, the Moss 15 was a World War I boat. In fact, it still exists. It's in Rome now. I went to go visit it over New Year's. Oh, awesome. I so that, yeah, it was part of my, my trip. Is that what inspired you to build this model? Or? I, I heard about it. I was just going to build an Italian motor sure. torpedo boat. Then I found out there's some history by this yeah. particular boat. They actually preserved it. It's in, it's in Rome. You can go yeah. see it. Um, and I found various pictures. It's really hard to find in English, especially. Uh, a lot of documentation on these ships, and I did find various configurations, so I'm assuming it actually served in World War II as well, because this crane the, was not on the original pictures that I saw of the World War I version, Sure. Uh, but they must have put a hoist on there to ease the, the, the loading and unloading of the right. of depth charges. So, uh, I might mind you, if you're trying to be a purist to do World War I, you may not, you just, just omit that oh, part. There you go. <laughs> Very easy, 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 That's easy. Cool. So we have two machine guns. Yep. These actually, in this case, they're, they're Brick Arms Hotchkiss machine guns. Um, on the boat, there is. It's it's actually they're they're not Hotchkiss. It's it's a, it's a more obscure gun that we do not have at Brick Arms. This is the closest rep right. representation I can get. Do you get. remember off the top of your head what that gun was called? <sighs> I want to say a Colt gun, but I don't. Th I don't. That's just what it's, it, it was a while. So okay. you have to understand that I did the research on this model several months ago. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm putting you, yeah, I'm putting you on the spot. No, it's it's okay. It's it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a it's it's a it's a good question. So you, you built this this ship uh, to be a modular, correct? Or, or right, right. So just like the other other torpedo boat, it's, it's a waterline model and yes. it's a display model. So we have this stand. The stand comes with it. Very nice stand here. Simple. Um, yep, stand. So you can display it. It actually says the Moss 15 on it. Yep. As, as does the boat. Yep. Right. Um, we can look at, the, just actually, while I'm taking off the stand, let's look at the top here. We do have these printed tiles. These are like kind of like foot footpaths. It's just like foot, an ex expanded threads. metal um, right. texture on there. And that would be so the, the, the crew could service the torpedoes. The actual boat has a crew of 10, I believe. Uh, we provided you with three minifigs. Right. Um, actually, I'll pull, pull the minifigs out here. Sure. So you have some Italian sailors. This is like, yeah. 
a first for us. We've so far we've only made American sailors. So oh. ooh, I, I put so he's got this Italian sailor has front and back printing. All right, and this is. Um, so we have three sailors that come with it. You have your and your officer. So it could be your Luigi Rizzo. Yes. Uh, Rizzo. I don't know. You've got you some classic it. Lego faces on these guys. Yes, of course. Yeah. Sailors. <laughs> That's cool. And we have another. So you have two two basic sailors, and one officer. Uh, enough to man the deck guns and have your guy in the pilot house. Yep. You do get an extra brick that your your officer can Ooh. stand on. So, because this this little deck house actually, they can he can sit down in it and you can pull this. Uh, oops, took too many pieces. Oh no! Here. So you can, you can actually close the hatches on here. So you have your guy sitting oh, cool. in the in, in the uh, the pilot house. You can close the hatch. So if in rough weather they they'd be able to close this. There is actually a door in the back. And another one that slides over. You'd have to. Kind of, they're just kind of simulated now. Sure. This can actually be opened up all the way. In the real thing, under here would be uh, two big, gigantic gasoline engines. This thing is, it's a beast. I mean, right. it's, it's a th like a thoroughbred racer on, on water. Um, so that, that does basically take care of your, your top side. But as you said before, it is, it is modular. Because right. I want, I, I mean, modular is not really the right word. It's, it's, it's designed to come apart. Sure. Um, I think that's a better description. So you can display it as, you know, both. Either both on the stand or if you have your own um, diorama. Right, you can take off, take off these bottom pieces. And you essentially have a waterline model now. So this is how it would sit. If, let's just imagine that there's so some it's nice sitting, water yeah, it's around sitting, it. It's sitting at harbor. You want to make a nice little harbor scene or something. Or That's you cool. want to make it attacking your, your, your Hungarian battleship. Is that your next kit, the Hungarian battleship? Yeah, like a 500 foot long. That's cool. Battleship. That'd be cool. cool. Yeah. <laughs> Real fish, authentic rollover action. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, what else do we have? We have a custom printed flag. Yeah, of course, one of our Brick Mania custom printed nice. flags. This is the World War One naval ensign. It's like the 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 royal, basically the Royal Italian Navy. Sure. Uh, Regina Maria. I'm not sure if that's the correct way to say it. Um, but basically, uh, yeah. I mean, you have an all-in-one uh, model of boat here. You can use it as a diorama. Use it as a display piece. Very unusual for us to do anything Italian World War One. I. I mean, we're really digging deep into the archive. Yeah. Uh, we're putting basically doing the stuff that we want to do, representing the entire World War One, not just you know the Western Front, the trenches, the kind of the Flanders stuff. Of course, important. Right. Hundred years ago, the history, all that stuff. It's 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 very important. But there's a lot of the World War One um, battlefields that we just don't even know about. We don't hear right. about um, you know the Eastern Europe, uh, Southern Europe, the, the Mediterranean. Um, that to us is very important. So we made 50 copies of this boat uh, as sort of a memorial um, to the other, you know, especially in English, uh, the English-speaking world. Very little is known about these things. Sure. I want to make sure that we. Uh, yeah, and it's it's, it's hugely interesting and and uh, obviously makes for cool models. Right, it does. And try to make everything as realistic as possible, so including the the working rudder on the. <laughs> yeah, it's got, it's got a very nice and detailed uh, uh, underside as well. So yeah, it's it's boring. It's it's I mean, well. it's, but it's supposed to. Be. It's the bottom. <laughs> it's the bottom of a boat. Yeah, and, it, and it's actually quite simple to put back together once you cool. once you built it. So it's there not like a big operation. The PT109. I mean, it's a bit more involved, but way more. Involved I mean, it's a bigger than, ship, yeah. so you had to. Oh. There were some structural. Oops. Considerations there. There we go. Back on the stand um, with the. There's a bit of a, there's a small sticker pack with this one as well, so you get the uh, Moss right. 15 stickers down here and on the side of the boat, and there's on both sides. Yeah, printed that. parts, printed guys, the flag. Work. You can actually make the little the little hoist work. You can you drop want. your own little depth charges. Yeah, well, I think they just push them off the. Deck. <laughs> just kick them. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I don't, I don't think they they would take bother with the crane at that point. I think. <laughs> yes. Roll them off the side. It is right. it's sort of a unique shape. The hull is rounded. Top. Yeah, let's go. Let's go look at just straight down the camera on that. That's yeah. a, a nice profile on that. So. Very characteristic of these Moss boats. And I, I don't know how many were built in, in World War One. This was kind of a second generation, um, and I think, you know, by the time World War Two came around, they were in the hundreds. Sure. So they obviously they 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 put a lot of value in the success um, that they had against the. Uh, um, the Austro-Hungarian Navy, and, and these things served in both world wars, but in particular, they made their biggest splash in World War One. Right, literally. Literally. Uh, oh, <laughs> I mean, it, it's a it's a speedboat with torpedoes and machine guns. That's pretty. Freaking. It's a fine Italian. It's a speedboat fine Italian speedboat made from the finest Italian lumber nice. by artisanal, artisanal craftsmen in Rome. <laughs> Actually, I don't think it was Rome. I think it was Venice. <laughs> Ven think Venetians, but Venetians know how to make ships. Right? Yeah. 
I think they just wanted to put torpedoes on, on a speedboat, and that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, well, they did, and it worked. Anything else? I think that's it. No, I think that's, that's it. it. I think there's 50 made. They're up for sale on Monday. Um, get them while you can. Nice. Awesome. All right, that is the episode. For more information, check out BrickMania.com. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and click that bell. If enough people click that bell, Dan will build an Austro-Hungarian battleship, maybe. No, I'll do that. Oh, awesome. cool. But enough. <laughs> but it has to be enough. So some arbitrary number. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> when I decide there's yeah. enough. <laughs>